Hey, this is Dr. Neil Schwartz. Today I'd like to talk about the language we use, how we identify ourselves, and how we evaluate ourselves relative to normal. One thing I hear a lot from those who are suffering from acne for many, many years is the quote, I have bad skin. Now, I have bad skin is a perfectly descriptive sentence. But today I'd like to offer an alternative sentence and I'd like to discuss the reasons why the language is so important. Rather than, quote, I have bad skin, the way I would say it is, my skin is doing poorly at this time. Now while both sentences describe the same situation, the undertones and the labeling and the identifiers associated with the sentences are very different. And I'll explain. Let's go back. Quote, I have bad skin. What this is saying is not just that you're having bad skin at this time. It's saying that your skin has been imbalanced for so long that you believe that you have a label or diagnosis called, quote, bad skin. With this label and with this diagnosis comes the human reflex of doom and gloom and hopelessness. I'll explain further. If you have, quote, bad skin as your identifier or your label or what we could even call a self-diagnosis, what you're saying is there's no possibility for you to have balanced, even, comfortable, smooth skin. If you, quote, have bad skin, this also has the undertone that your children will have bad skin. It has the undertone that you will not be able to achieve your dreams and you will be inhibited from many romanticized visions in your life. The quote, I have bad skin, is filled with doom and gloom. Allow me to offer this alternative. If your skin has been bumpy, oily, dry, flaky, uncomfortable, flushing, patchy, blotchy, uneven, dark marks, uncomfortable, itchy, roughened, prematurely aged. Let's consider the quote, my skin is doing poorly at this time. Here are the undertones to quote, my skin is doing poorly at this time. It means that there is a time in the future where your skin could be very much in balance, could be very even, very smooth, and very comfortable. It also allows the possibility that your children can have balanced skin. It offers the possibility that you could have romanticized visions and dream anything you want without inhibition and without any type of hopelessness or limitation. There is a huge difference between, quote, I have bad skin, and quote, my skin is doing poorly at this time. The skin is constantly renewing itself. So the skin you have today is not going to be the skin you have a year from now. It is very different, both on the superficial levels and on the deeper levels. Once you really understand how the skin works, you understand that whatever skin you have today is not the skin you're going to have next year. They are very different. Is it possible that you could still be in the same situation next year as you are this year? Of course. That's if you don't have the proper treatment, the proper weaponry, and the proper skill to get yourself from point A to point B. So this video is about how our language controls our level of hopelessness and doom and gloom. Now, let's address a common question that might arise from this video. And here it is. Quote, Dr. Neal, what about genetic predispositions? And what about all this talk about how genetics plays a major role in the health of my skin. Here's my response to this common thought. Your genetic predisposition for acne is only controlling the level in which you have to work in order to get balanced skin. For example, I'll draw it out for you with my hands. If this is point B, balanced skin, right here, if you get to this point, your skin is oil-free, it has no dryness, no flakiness, no bumps, and it feels comfortable, which is very important too, how it feels, how you sense it. That's point B. Now point A can be anywhere close to point B or far away from point B. 
the speed in which you can get to point B also varies based on your genetic predisposition and once you get to point B the rate in which you fall back to point A or relapse to point A is also related to both your genetics, your development, and your lifestyle. However, regardless of where you are in relation to point B, what you need to know from this video is that you can always get to point B. It's always treatable. That's why I built the video gallery, because I kept hearing that to get from here to here was an impossibility. And people were trying to convince me that it was an impossibility. And to convince them back, I wasn't going to use adamant tones, claims, or enthusiasm. Instead, I decided to use evidence. And now that the video gallery has become a body of work that is an irrefutable body of evidence, it seems that everyone is getting the picture that from point A to point B is always possible. Let's further detail how the genetic predisposition plays using this hand graph, using examples. So, for example, let's say someone has no family history of acne. Let's say they've had great skin for 25 years, and then they lose control of their skin. Let's say they get divorced, or they go through, they lose their job, or something bad happens where someone who's not prone to acne in general, all of a sudden gets their first loss of control for several months, and then they get very concerned. In that example, this being point B, their point A can be anywhere along the spectrum here, depending on the severity and the accumulation of the bumps that they're experiencing. So at 25, they fell down the hill, essentially. And let's say they landed right here, moderate to severe acne, and it was, it's pretty serious. In this example, someone who is not highly predisposed to acne and has no family history of acne, with the right weaponry and skill, they will drive themselves to point B and then they will get clear. Now their predisposition to fall back down the hill may be higher than when they first started because one of the things that makes you more acne prone is actually having active acne for a long time. So they may be more predisposed to falling down the hill than they were, say, five years ago. But this situation is the type that goes into remission easier because it had been in remission or never presented itself for so many years prior. Example number two. Let's do someone with a large family history of acne who has always had acne since puberty and continues to have acne through seeing dermatologists and even taking Accutane possibly. Here's how this looks. Here's point B. They were right here until they hit 15 years old or 14 years old, sometimes even 10 years old, and they began to quickly fall down the hill. They were a little more predisposed or maybe there was a little more stress in their life, either way. They fall down the hill and then they start to climb up the hill, getting partial improvement with their dermatologists or their treatments. Sometimes they make it all the way to point B but then they relapse again. Every time they get there and falling back, it continually traumatizes them emotionally. And this becomes their identity. After five to 10 years of this experience, they've been floating in this area out of control for so long that they get the idea that, quote, my skin is bad. And the reason is, is because their skin has been out of balance for so many years consistently. So when I tell them, no, 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 say it like this, my skin is just doing badly at this time, their response is, my skin has been doing badly since I went through puberty. My response to that is, you've been imbalanced since the onset of this condition for you. And sometimes when people have been imbalanced since the onset, they have a very difficult time seeing the possibility of a real inactivation. So let me show you how it works with someone who's highly acne prone. Here's point B. They, at 12 years old, they fell down the mountain and since have had varying degrees, maybe partial remission, maybe short-term remission, and keep coming back. And so they're constantly not at point B. They're floating and getting taunted and teased, trying to get to point B and hold it. Sometimes they'll even get clear and then immediately eat a dessert or have a hormonal flare and fall back down the mountain. This situation creates all the hopelessness. And let me explain to you how this situation 
is handled in the acne practice as proven by the videos. Wherever they come in, whether it be mild persistent, you know, moderate persistent, or persistent and severe, with the right weaponry and skill, I drive them to point B. Then I teach them how to monitor for the smallest of relapses so that they don't fall back down the mountain. And so after I clear these clients up, our relationship, our interaction is not finished. We have to then continue the interaction to make sure there's no slippage. So typically with a persistent acne client with a family history of acne who gets from point A to point B and sticks it there, typically this is what our goal is. Our goal is to expect them to try to relapse but to be on it so quick that they do this for a lifetime. And this is a satisfying experience because even if you start to get tiny bumps, you're back on it so fast and so back in control so quickly that you don't have to worry about it. In this scenario, you don't have to worry about eating dessert. You don't have to worry about your hormones. You don't have to worry about your period. You don't have to worry about stress. Because even if the menstrual period or stress brings you back a little bit, you can close this gap so quickly and so powerfully that you end up in a place in what I call the threshold of satisfaction. And the threshold of satisfaction in the acne practice is control and no fear of aggravators.